All right, so let's set the Wayback Machine to 2014. Yes, this book is a decade old, but I finally got around to reading The Life We Bury by Alan Eskins. This book's interesting in a couple of ways. First of all, it's a kind of a detective novel, but it doesn't really follow the detective. Uh, detect there is a detective in it, but he kind of comes in towards the very end, and he's really not that big of a part of the plot. The other interesting thing is, is this book is actually the start of two different series. One follows said detective. The other one follows Joe Talbert. Joe Talbert is the college student at the heart of this. He's got a rough life. He's got a m absentee father. Never, never met the man. He's got a mom who is a drunk with anger management issues. And he's got a, a brother. I think he's think he's supposed to be like 18 or so, but he's autistic. And Joe has finally gotten himself extricated from this situation by going off to college, but he's not quite far enough away that mom can't keep reeling him back in every time she needs to be bailed out or his brother needs to be watched. It's, it's, a, it's a whole thing. Add to this, he's got an assignment due for his English class. It happens to be a biography class specifically, and he needs to write a biography about someone. Obviously, he doesn't know his father or uh, any of the people on that side of the family. He's not going to <laughs> interview his mom. And also the fact his, uh, his grandparents on his mom's side are also gone. So he goes out and finds himself a, a living, an assisted living place. And he's like, surely I can talk to somebody in here. The gatekeepers, however, don't want to let him through. But finally, they decide, you know what? Let's. He could talk to Carl. Now, Carl's got an interesting backstory. Carl is only in the assisted living facility because he's been let out of prison because he's got pancreatic cancer. Uh, basically, this is just making him comfortable until he dies. But he's been in jail for like 30 years for the, for the rape and murder of a teenager. But as Joe finds more and more out about the story, becomes quite apparent that maybe he really didn't do the stuff he was in jail for. And he's also trying to figure out why Carl isn't trying, never tried harder to get out if he really was innocent. Becomes a whole, whole story, basically. Like I said, it is kind of a detective story. Joe almost becomes an investigative reporter, even though this is just a, a college class. And comes, you know, down to the heart of it and finds out the truth of what really, really happened. And there's, you know, things that happen when you do stuff like that. Uh, when, you, when you try to open up a murder case that's been closed and buried for a while, uh, some people might get upset, especially anybody who had anything to do with it. So it's, it's got a little action here and there. Obviously, because it's from Joe's perspective, I think that took a little bit of the tension away because you're kind of assuming you know joe lives to tell you about this is this a good book yes this is a good book uh not quite a five star for me this uh definitely i'm, I'm giving this one four stars definitely good definitely has enough going in it that it actually could be a reread as well and normally mysteries can't really pull that off too well because once you know the secret it's it's not nearly as exciting but i could go back and read this and see if there's anything i missed Anyhow, uh, like I said, if you do like the book, there's two completely different series that you can go on from there. Uh, I find it very, very interesting. They, Joe is a very sympathetic character. Uh, you know, he's trying to be a good brother. He's kind of trying to be a good son, but is also kind of fed up with it all, which is completely understandable. You're not going to like the mom. Nobody's going to like the mom. The, the, the kids don't like she, she's not a good mom. She's not a good mom. Anyhow, but uh, I do know that we pick up quite a few years later. Where there's another book in the Joe Talbert series, but I do know that there are also even more books in the Max Rupert series, which is the detective that shows up towards the end of the book. And I, I don't know if it was always designed for that. I'd love to ask Alan, like, did you intend to always write two different series? Did you write the joe talbert book and then decided you know you liked max rupert enough that he needed to get his own series i don't know uh 
Either way, I, I would not be against reading more books in this series if I can get through my TBR, because as you know, most of my TBR is science fiction and fantasy with a little horror thrown in. So mysteries kind of come here and there. I always like mysteries when I read them. They're just like tier B as to where fantasy and sci-fi is kind of my tier A. So I don't always, I'm not always up to date on, on my mysteries. I like my horror. I'm not always up to date on my horror. It's kind of the, kind of the B series of genres that, that I love. This is the downside of liking too many genres as you can't keep up with anything. All right. I know the book's a decade old, uh, but if you do like mysteries, I do say this one is worth checking out. If you don't like mysteries, I don't know if this is the one that I would have you start out with. This is not, uh, it's, it's not so great that it's, you know, can't pass it up even, even if you're, if you're not a mystery fan. But if you do like mysteries, definitely it's in the link. You know, it's in the link. It's always in the link. So also, if you're bored, watch one of these other videos that are going up somewhere on the screen. Because you love me. All right. Have a good one, guys.